What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you all are having a great day. If you're not already a subscriber, make sure you do subscribe now as this is the number one channel on the platform for Yankees content. So for today's video, I want to address what kind of seems to be the elephant in the room and that is what is the future for Didi Gregorius? So obviously Didi is currently a free agent and it is a big question mark on whether or not he will be resigned or if the Yankees will let him walk. Now I know many of you guys are big fans of Didi and I'm not going to say I'm not as well. But let's talk about the facts when it comes to this situation, what the pros and the cons are of him as a player. First of all, I want to say that Didi was given the impossible task of filling in for a franchise legend in Derek Jeter, and he took upon that task rather well. He had a couple nice seasons in the pinstripes and was definitely a solid clubhouse presence and also handled the media very well. Over five seasons in the Bronx, Didi averaged about 24 homers, 88 RBI, hitting around 270 a season. On the surface, yeah, it looks like some solid numbers, and he really did have a couple solid seasons with the club, as I mentioned before. His best year would be 2018, where he had 268, a career-high OBP of 335, slugging 494, with 27 homers, posting a weighted runs created plus of 122 in a 4.7 F4 season. That's legitimately a solid season for a shortstop. He's also had some real big home runs in his time here, most notably being the three-run homer in the Walker game in 2017, made Yankee Stadium absolutely electric, brought it back to life, quite possibly the best Yankee moment I've ever personally witnessed. However, let's now go over the negative that comes with Didi Gregorius' game that really really came to a head in 2019. First things first though, I do have to acknowledge that Didi was coming off Tommy John surgery heading into 2019, and that certainly had to have been tough, which is why I feel somewhat comfortable giving him the benefit of the doubt on his brutal 2019 season. And it certainly was brutal. Over 82 games, Didi hit a miserable 238 with an even worse 276 OBP, sucking 441 with a well below league average weighted runs created plus of 84. His weighted on base average was 297, which is miserable as well, along with finishing the season with a .9 F4. That is not good. All those are bad numbers, and there's no reason to try to put lipstick on a pig here. On the defensive side of things, he was not much better at all. He was worth negative six defensive runs saved, meaning he was below league average defensively as well. So let me sum everything up. Didi was given the impossible task of replacing Derek Jeter, and he filled in real nicely considering the circumstances. He had a couple solid years, including one real nice one in 2018, but overall, it hasn't been as outstanding as many of you thought, which includes a brutal 2019 season that may or may not have been impacted by his Tommy John surgery. With all that said, what will the free agent market hold for Didi Gregorius? For the Yankees, it definitely wouldn't be much past a one-year deal in the $12 million range. However, MLBTradeRumors.com projects Didi to field multi-year deals in the $40 million range, with the favorite being the Cincinnati Reds, which is the team that he debuted with back in 2012. Now, if it were up to me, what would I do with a Didi Gregorius situation? Personally, I'd be open to bringing him back on a one-year prove-it deal, you know? I think Didi is a better player than he showed in 2019, and that he can still help this Yankee team reach their ultimate goal, which is number 28. However, I wouldn't come anywhere close to offering him a multi-year deal. Not a chance. So yeah, give Didi a one-year deal, and I'm fine with it, but definitely not anything past that. I think he is a much better player than he was in 2019. So that's my opinion on the DD free agency situation. Now I want to hear yours. As always, I'd like to feature three comments from my community posts on the topic so I can get your guys' voices involved. So the question I posed to you guys was, do you want DD Gregorius back in pinstripes? Why or why not? Starting us off, we have Danny Stefanski. He writes, no, I love DD, but we're so stacked in the infield and I'd like to see the money we would give him go towards starting pitching instead. Yeah, the money, that's definitely a big factor for it, at least in my opinion. I mean, $12 million, it may not be that much to sniff at. It really still is a solid amount of money when you consider that we are in a quote-unquote financial bind in terms of trying to stay below um, the luxury tax thresholds. I wouldn't sign DD. I would be, I guess, open to it. Um... But yeah, I agree with you. We definitely are stacked in the infield with Miguel and Duhar coming back, assuming there is no trade. Now, there very well could be a trade. I'm not too sure. I did make a video on this, um, so make sure you guys do check that out. Uh, but yeah, infield-wise, you'd have Gio at third, Glaber at short, DJ at second, Luke Voigt at first. I guess Miguel and Duhar can either compete for the third base job or DH him. I would just trade him, um, but that's that. So yeah, I agree with you, Danny. I think we definitely, not. I don't want to say we're better off, but we can definitely fathom the loss of uh, Didi Gregorius. Uh, moving on, Jamie McNeil writes, It's all about how many years. I think the Yankees would gladly give him two, perhaps even three years. But Didi may but Didi may find a team willing to sign him to a five- or six-year deal. And if he does, he's out of New York. Jamie, man, the Yankees would definitely not give him two years. I think that's almost certain. Definitely not three. Absolutely not three. At most, it'll be a one-year prove-it deal, like I said before. Um, and Didi's definitely not finding a five- or six-year deal anywhere anywhere at most maybe a four-year deal i would say likelihood maybe a three-year deal outside of the yankees maybe like the rumor is that cincinnati may sign up for like the three-year 40 million dollar range 
but he's definitely not getting that anywhere close to New York. I've also have seen rumors that the Mets may sign him, but they're not going to give him that money either way. Um, yeah, so five or six year deal, that's definitely off the table. In the Yankees side of things, anything past a one year deal is off the table. Um, all right, third and final comment, Brian Jemian writes, I do not. He has a horrific OBP and is terrible in almost every advanced metric. His defense was also overrated this season. Yeah, the OBP is a real big thing for me. Didi has never been a high OBP guy, which you guys know I'm obsessed with. Not even obsessed with, I'm just I'm smart, no offense. I'm smart in that aspect where I know that OBP is much more valuable than batting average. You guys, not you, all of you, but a lot of you guys do look at batting average over OBP. And yeah, Didi has had some okay batting averages besides 2019. 2019 all around, he was just terrible. Uh, but he has hit like almost 290 before. He's hit about 270, which, you know, doesn't strike you guys as bad. His OBP has never been high. His, his highest OBP was in 2018, about 335. That was his career high. That's not even that great. That's like okay, like ish. Um, still, that's not all that good. So yeah, Brian, he definitely does have horrific OBP, and he's definitely terrible in almost every advanced metric, especially on defense. Um, yeah, Didi's de uh, defense has definitely been overrated for a while. Um, like I said, he was minus six defensive run save this year. Uh, I know you give him the eye test, and he looks really good at, um, at shortstop. Metrics don't agree. Um, offensively, below league average, weighted runs created plus, 84. That is really, really bad, guys. Don't put lipstick on a pig. I agree with you, Brian. Um, but yeah, right, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Even if your comment was not featured, drop a comment down below what you want the Yankees to do with Didi Gregorius. Do you want him to be re-signed? Um, now, before I wrap things up, I do want to plug our new podcast called Lights Out that will be coming out every Monday. I did do an introductory video on that, so make sure you check that out as well. I'll put all that in the description. Basically, every Monday we'll be debuting, not debuting, debuting next week, Lights Out podcast. It's going to be basically all about the New York Yankees every Monday night. Going into off-season news, we'll take it into the actual regular season. It's going to be really fun. Strictly Yankees, that way you guys get your Yankees fix in the off-season. Uh, be sure to follow me on social media, at Dan Allen Rourke, and on Twitter, and on Instagram, Yankees Avenue, and my white home runs, all that. And uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe if you aren't already. We're going for 20,000 subscribers here on the number one channel for Yankees content on YouTube. So yeah, that's going to be everything uh, for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Let's go Yankees. Her body's gone like September. She burns through the night like an ember And all those things we try forgetting I remember But we say we all fine, we all fine Sunny day dreams and we up now Vodka lemonade, I serve it up, it goes down 75 degrees in a dope sound All you need to live fine, to live fine A little sunshine cause she need it A dose of rainfall in the evening The waves crash down and we feel them Say here's to the nights we steal them And I be running cause I figured out The more I slow down the less I get out And if we fall let's be strong now Moving along we don't